This is a ramping up your English book review. After American Railroad's golden age, thousands of miles of track were abandoned. Rather than see these valuable transportation corridors disappear, an organization called Rails to Trails turns them into trails for bicycling, hiking, and sometimes horseback riding. Members get to see good work that's being done by enjoying the organization's magazine. Each issue features rail trails throughout the country, as well as maps that can help them enjoy them. There are always interesting features like this one on railroad trestles. If you want to receive the magazine, you must become a member. I bought my first copy from a group that supports libraries, but I soon became a member myself to support their important work. Millions of people are enjoying healthy lives by getting outside and using these trails. And if you need something to feel good about, you can always enjoy a Rails to Trails magazine. You can contact Rails to Trails at railstotrails.org. You may never get to drive a train, but you can enjoy hiking and biking where the trains used to pass. For Ramping Up Your English, I'm John Letts. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English, a support program for intermediate level English learners. You can watch and download this program and others by visiting archive.org slash details slash rogue TV. Choose Ramping Up Your English from the sidebar or choose my name, John Letts. You can see this program on channel 15 in Ashland and channel 182 on Charter Cable. This is episode 13, segment two. We started this unit with some basic vocabulary about our theme. Researcher Susanna Dutro calls this the brick vocabulary, words that support the content. Since those early episodes, our focus has been on words and groups of phrases that allow us to perform various functions of English, like showing cause and effect or showing the relationship of events that happened in the past. These words are called martyr words by Dutro. They're not words of things or actions or descriptions. Think of them as a brick wall. Just as martyr holds the bricks together so they bear the weight of the wall, martyr words connect the content words to perform the functions of English. Today we're taking another look at content words. Now, there are many railroad-related words that have special meanings to those who work on the railroad and those who take an interest in trains. Those we're saving for a future program. Our list today have to do with communicating about trains and railroads and can be transferred to other topics. Let's start with this list. I encourage viewers to make their own lists of words they hear often in the video clips we feature. Take a look and see if any of your words are on this list. Now, a long list like this can seem overwhelming. By the time you look up all these in the dictionary, you might forget what the first words meant. One way to tame a long list like this is to put the words into groups. You may have some ideas about what these words mean based on how they're used in the video clips, and that's enough of a hunch to start grouping them. You can always move them as you become more certain of their meanings. Let's start with the words that relate to actual physical running of the train, the rails, steam, diesel, electric, locomotive. We'll call this group one. How about the words that probably have something to do with passenger trains? We have baggage car, platform station, dining car, seats, waiting room, Amtrak. Well, there we have it. That's group two. Thinking of an earlier episode when we learned about words describing movement or motion, we have smooth, jerky, bumpy, slowly, and rapidly in our third group. Now the words we may have no idea about, whistle, catch, benches, menu, comfort, intercity, this fourth group is important and should always be done last. So let's get back to that first group. We've heard a lot about these words in many episodes, and we're pretty sure that rails are the straight, parallel structures made of metal that fit the wheels of the train. The word steam comes up when we see those old engines that make a lot of smoke. 
Diesel electric is the other kind of engine. It doesn't smoke as much. The word locomotive used to be puzzling because of the first four letters that might mean crazy in your native language if your native language is Spanish. But you always hear the word used when showing the engine, so locomotive must be engine. Now let's look at the second group. We had several programs featuring passenger trains, so this group should be a good one for you today. In many clips, the car that holds the suitcases we hear is called the baggage car. You knew enough English to understand that the narration explained that the platform is where passengers get on and off the train. The platform seems to always be at a place called the station, so that must be the building where the passengers get on and off the train, where the train stops. The people are always eating when you hear dining car. Seats is a word related to sit, so seats are probably what you sit on in the station, in the waiting room. Now you've seen a list of food offerings at restaurants with the word menu on top. Plus it could be a cognate in your own language. If so, there's no doubt about that one. Now let's look at group three. This one's easy for you because you watched the episode where we described the train's motion and these were some of the words. You have high certainty except the word intercity. It ends with a Y like most of the others, but you don't remember that one and it's not even on the list you found on my website. Intercity has to now go to the unknown word list. That brings us to list four of unknowns. Maybe some of these belong on other lists. So let's start with whistle. If you have no idea, this is a good one to look up in your bilingual dictionary. You find that it's a sound. Wait! The dictionary even says it's a sound made by trains. So we move that to group one. Now catch means to entrap or grab, as in catching an animal or catching a ball. Hmm, wonder what that has to do with trains. Well, we'll leave that one in the unknown list. Looking up bench, we see that it's a type of seat, and that confirms what seat means, and now we know that bench is a kind of seat. Hey, maybe seat is not just for the waiting room. Maybe it's where you sit on the train. Comfort, no idea. You know what fort is, but how do the words, the letters C-O-M change that? to something related to trains. Intercity turns out to be simple. The dictionary tells you that the prefix inter means between, and you know that city, you know what that means, so intercity means between cities. Whew, that's a lot of vocabulary work, but it tells you which one of these words you know and which one you're pretty sure of and which ones you simply don't know now. Learning a second language means constantly having these lists going around in your head, seeing if you can figure out where they fit. Now you know which words to pay the most attention to. Now as for the unknown words, ask yourself if they keep you from understanding what you hear and read. If they don't, you can let them go. If they do interfere, you may need to do some more work using a dictionary and digging through every definition listed under the word. The word catch, for example, will not have being on time to board a train as the first or even the second definition, unless it's a glossary on a, in a book about trains. This was about the biggest list of words you'd want to take on at one time. Now, watch another video clip or two and see if you understand more after this video work. You can start with the clip that follows. That's it for segment two. We'll be back with segment three right after this.